Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. In the last part we did some stuff and now we're back at Tarm Ruins. You might remember I actually showed this place off a couple parts back. So now that we have the four jewels we can actually, oh, do stuff here? Though I do admit it's kind of annoying how they show the text for every single one. I kind of wish they didn't like the tablets in the, the ancient tomb back in ages, but oh well. Also, this is my favorite area theme in the game. Oh my god, I love this song! Anyway, you need to make it summer so you can climb up these vines to get up here. Uh, if you make it winter, when you can eventually come up here when it is so, and you go into behind those mushrooms, you'll actually find uh, a Deku scrub you can knock seeds back at, and he'll give you a hint on how to progress in this area later on. Anyway, you need to push that uh, armor statue there in order to make those stairs appear so you can get to that... Uh, words stump so let's go over here and make it winter and now we can head up here however we actually want to push two of these armo statues particularly the bottom two in order to make a pathway out of this little area now, before we progress onwards, I want to make it winter again. Uh, you need it, um, I should mention, if you just want to progress onwards, you need to make it winter, but I'm, uh, autumn rather. But I want to make it winter, because if we go over here when it is winter, we get the third golden creature, the Golden Lionel, who is honestly my least favorite one. Mostly because he hurts. And again, Lionels have always been very damaging, ever since Zelda 1, even. So that's three of them down, one to go. Anyway, now we need to make it autumn. Which I actually kind of like the color scheme when it's autumn here. It's a nice kind of pinkish purple. I suppose magenta would be the proper term. Though, I mean, I think for this place my favorite color scheme is the summer one. I love that deep, deep green. Uh, that broken, that breakable wall right there is a Fugate Fairies Fountain. Uh, for future reference, and you're gonna want to burn this little bush. You don't need to, if you know what to do, you can just skip it entirely. But I might as well show you what it's here for. There's a Deku Scrub in here. Who's staring at our phonograph, so let's play it. He's gonna teach us the way to his secret spot, and it's that the temperatures need to rise as we head to west. Also, this is the only other place in the game you can hear the Song of Storms. That is very important. In fact, it's very similar to uh, what that other Deku Scrub that I didn't meet would have told you. Pretty much that we need to, in order to get to our final destination, we need to make the temperatures rise as we go in certain directions. Welcome to the Lost Woods, by the way. Yep, these things are back for some reason. Anyway, let's head over to that secret spot. We need to make the temperatures rise as we head west, so we need to make it winter, autumn, spring, then summer. This is entirely uh, optional, but it, it's honestly recommended you can you do this. In fact, uh, you can do this without having to do the trade quest at all, I believe. I've never done it without doing the trade quest, because I always do it out of hop habit, I suppose, but... I think you can skip it, but do not quote me on that. But once you do that... We find a sword. Could it be? We got the Legendary Master Sword! Yep, that's how you get the Master Sword in a linked game. You have to get the normal upgrades. So now this game is going to get royally screwed. Anyway, now we have to progress towards the dungeon. What you have to do is make it the same seasonal order, winter, autumn, spring, fall, or uh, summer, but head west, south, east, and north in that order with each preceding season. Or succeeding season. It's not the most complicated, uh, Lost Woods, that's for sure. That probably belongs to Majora's Mask, even though it's the same pattern every time. Mostly just because you have to get that freaking monkey to guide you. Anyway, welcome to the Full Out Tarm Ruins, which is another place I love to look at. We want to make it summer because that's the time that the seeds sprout over here. In fact, uh, the seed trees actually only sprout at certain seasons in this game. Unlike ages, where I think it takes a certain amount of time, or you need to go into the past, or something like that. Anyway, we want to come over here and lift these mushrooms, because there's a guy we can get money from underneath here. I think, or is it just a gacha seed? 
Eh, it's just Castro City, never mind. Mind you, I already have enough money as it is. Almost max, actually. Well, at least buying Gasha Seeds will be easy. In fact, I should mention, the only place that sells Gasha Seeds infinitely and for a solid price is Syrup's shop, which he sells them for 300 each. I just have to hope I get that freaking heart piece before the game ends! Or I can do another grind fest before I go to Dungeon 8 like last time. Ooh, money! And there's a hidden Gasha Soil spot there if you want it. I'm going to plant something there because I can. Uh, I do believe one of those four trees at the bottom of that screen does hide a mean old man. Same with this screen. I'm not entirely sure about that, though. We want to push this guy over, jump down, and we can make the spring, uh, the spring, su uh, season. Hmm. My words aren't good, if you cannot tell. I was tempted to go into Christopher Walk in there, but oh, oh well. Also, as you can probably tell, we've been on a majority of the map. There's only three areas we haven't been, and we're going to be there within the rest of the game. So, yeah. Welcome to level six, Ancient Ruins. Another song I really love. And also, welcome to what is probably the longest dungeon in the game, because this place has five floors, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's three parts long, honestly. It's also where we get the revenge of the rotating platform. I think that might be the only other one in the game, by the way. And this place is complicated. First off, we got enemy variety, and we got these random... Ice? Jewels? What are these things? These little golden crystals. You can destroy them with your sword and various other items, I believe. So they're not even dangerous, but they're just obstacles. Also, don't be surprised if you take a lot of damage in this place. Uh, in fact, if you have a magic potion, I wouldn't be surprised if you end up using it. You're gonna want to get your bombs out, because on this room, there's actually a hidden room you can go into that's not on the map at all. You can bomb this place open to find a room very similar to what we found back in Snake's Remains. A rupee room. I think this one's set at 100, though. And since I have max, I don't need it. So, yeah. If I ever need money, I guess I'll come back here and collect that. I doubt I'll ever need money, though, because it's just not necessary. Uh, now, a lot of the early dungeon does revolve around you circling around for this platform, and a couple of times I'm actually going to be editing out the circle. This is a room I do not like much at all. First off, let's get rid of the hardhead beetle. And uh, one thing I've actually been incorrect about for quite some time now is that you can, in fact, get the fairies from certain enemies with, by hitting them with the boomerang. However, it's not the anti-fairies or bubbles this time around. It's the sparks, which I don't get. What we need to do here is use our magnetic gloves in tandem with the rock's feather in order to bring that thing over to around that purple block on the right side of the screen. However, the thing is... <clears throat> if... The magnetic gloves, for whatever reason, cause the ball to fall into the pit, like it does so here. You need to go, you need to exit the room, come back in, and redo the entire thing, including the enemies. So, needless to say, I cut past that. Oh no. There we go. And when you get on the switch, you get a key. This is a pretty simple room. Kill them all, you get the access to this block. And then you can come back to the entrance room. I'm actually doing this a bit out of order. Uh, you, what I'm supposed to do is actually head north one screen from the previous room via the stairs on the right in order to get something. But I can do this now. It doesn't really do much. And the key is obviously for that block there. Oh, and, uh, get used to this music, because you're going to be hearing it for a while, whether or not you're following me as a guide or otherwise. Because it's short, it's repetitive, and this dungeon is long. I don't know why I didn't get that treasure chest. I just didn't, for some reason. Eh. I love tapping the button to the music, if you can't tell. 
Anyway, now we can unlock this now that we have the dungeon map, which, as you probably noticed, it's kind of an alternating spiral kind of shape. And now I circled back around because uh, that's what we needed to do. Uh, I just went through the same set of floor, uh, rooms I went through when we first entered. Because we want to do that in order to get up here so this thing can turn us to the north. Gee, I wonder what I do here. And then suddenly foot! <laughs> and I do mean an actual stone foot from the sky, not the ninjas from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> There's an image, though. <laughs> Raphael and Link fighting together. <laughs> We get the return of the blade traps for the first time in a while, if I recall correctly. And they're still as, un effect as ineffectual as they were before. And shield beetles, uh, shell beetles, spiky beetles, that's their name, I, I can't remember, honestly. Like in the last, like earlier, uh, use your shield to knock them over, though you can still use your shovel to just properly flip them over if you know the timing, which I do not. Well, yeah, it's weird. Uh, the rocks feather is actually a lot more useful for evading enemies than it is for platforming. I don't know why that is, but it it is for some reason. Although, that's one annoying thing. Uh, enemies on floors will respawn if you go to another floor, because I think you're technically loading another environment set. But I'm not sure the exact specifics, because I'm no programmer. Yet. Anyways, here I cut back to here, because we're just circling around again. And now we're back in this room, because now that we have a spare key, we can open this place. Welcome to one of my least favorite rooms in the game. It's a very easy room, concept-wise. It's the fact that that BMOS and my lack of good platforming skills in Zelda games that I end up taking a lot of damage. We need to come up here to the upper left corner for the compass in which there is uh, six chests left, I want to say. It's not just the BMOS actually that causes trouble. It's the collision detection on the pit versus the platform is really weird. Like, look at that. I was on the platform entirely, but I still fell through it. The, the moment I think you, you're even half your hitbox leaves the platform, I think your counter is in the pitfall. I don't like single platforms like this for that reason alone. Okay, this room. You're gonna want your Pegasus seats for this room because we got another little race to do. All I have to do is get to the upper left corner upon hitting the switch, but uh, it can be kind of tricky to time such because a bridge appears and then the platforms start falling. But it's rather simple, honestly. And more Gibdos, who, now that we have the, the Master Sword, go down in two strikes. And bombs, which means we're probably going to end up using them. Oh, but you look at that, there's a cracked wall, I never would have seen that coming. So, let's get our bombs out, and like with the Dongos, BOMB! But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 14, we'll be continuing on here in the Ancient Ruins, probably getting close to the end in the process. See you guys then.